Hey everybody, Bill Johnston with the Online Community Report and Forum One Networks here at the Online Community Summit 2009. And I'm here with Mari Kuraishi from Global Giving. Mari, thanks so much for answering a few questions for us today. Uh-huh. All right. So, so first, could you tell us a little bit about the Global Giving community? Sure. So Global Giving is a platform where donors and project leaders can come together. Essentially, you, know, you as a donor might come on the site and say, you know, I just heard about this earthquake in China, and I want to do something, and I know the Red Cross is doing something, but I actually want to hear, do it really directly. So you can find a project on our site that's doing, you know, relief work in Chengdu, and you can hear feedback from the field. We make that possible. And the, your, the site actually sprung out of um, work that you were doing at the World Bank, is that correct? Yes, we, we were involved in business innovation at the World Bank. So, it's, so in some ways you can think of this as sort of, you know, a derivative of the World Bank for the public and for the thousands and millions of social entrepreneurs out there in the field who will never get support from the World Bank. So... And so our community is the donor community, but it's also the social entrepreneur community. Great. How do you think about the concept of value or even success for your community? Like, what's a win? What does value look yeah. like? So, you know, the, the kind of win that I wish we could replicate over and over again is the kind of thing that happens when... There was this donor who gave to this project in Guatemala supporting organic farmers, right? And so this project leader writes back after a month or two and says, you know, we just started getting eggs from our organic chickens and, you know, we're, we're getting X number of eggs and we've got so many chickens. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but the donor sort of reads this report and writes back and says, hey, you know, that sounds like an awfully low yield of eggs to me. Like, you know, I'm an organic farmer here in Seattle, and that just doesn't sound quite right. You know, you know, maybe there's something you're doing wrong. And the project leader sort of goes back and says, "Oh, you know what? I made a mistake in my Excel spreadsheet. So it's actually the ratio is a lot closer to this." And the donor writes back, "Oh my God, that's great. You know, that's really close to the ratio I'm getting. You know, yay for the chickens." You know, that kind of connection between a random donor who says, oh, I, I'm an organic farmer, so I'm going to support this organic farmer in Guatemala, and they can actually exchange, you know, information and support and encouragement. That's the kind of thing that I wish we could just sort of repeat and scale and just create this engagement that I think, you know, over time is going to translate into just activism, public policy change, and, you know, just more resources flowing to these social entrepreneurs. So you're doing such an innovative thing um, with at the intersection of, you know, community and almost like micro-philanthropy and policy yeah. change, all the areas that you yeah. just talked about. I have to imagine you've learned a ton, but could you, you know, give um, the OC Report readers, you know, the sort of two to three key things you've learned or that surprised you about the community engagement? So, a um, couple things. One is that everyone always asks, so, you know, you're working with all these people in the third world, don't they, like, have access problems? And, you know, how do you, like, explain the internet to them? And the, the truth is, yes, a lot of people don't have access. But the truth is also that a surprising number of people have access. And so that's one lesson that I would like to sort of some your readers to take away with. Technology can be a barrier because of cost or access or bandwidth, but it is surprisingly less, and it is our one shot, in fact. You know, we're, we're a tiny team. We're 20 people or whatever. For us to be reached, the hun- to be able to reach the hundreds of social entrepreneurs we do in 70 different countries, we could not do it without technology. Not at this cost and not at this breadth. So that's one really, you know, unexpected thing that I always have to disabuse people about. Great. Uh, what excites you most about your work? You know, the, the thing that excites me most is that social entrepreneur, right? Okay, so let me step back for a minute. When we first started Global Giving, we, we were talking about social entrepreneurs. We did some focus studies and people turned around to us and said, what's a social entrepreneur? Is it like Che Guevara? Is it like 
Castro. <laughs> We're like, uh, not the right image, sorry. Okay, well, let's step back. These are people, community leaders, whatever. But in fact, they are entrepreneurs doing socially innovative things. And the thing is, there's such a tiny, tiny minority right now in the world. And it's really hard to be a social entrepreneur. You have to be heroic. You have to be persistent. You have to be a little crazy. And what I want to do with global giving and what sort of keeps me going is the idea that we can make social entrepreneurship as easy as opening a Subway franchise. Now, I'm not saying that opening Subway franchise is, is you know, a piece of cake, but it is kind of, it's ubiquitous, right? The, right. Think of the number of Subway franchises. It can't be rocket science. I want social enterprise to be like no longer rocket science, no longer a heroic act, nothing deserving a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> Great. So that's what keeps me going. Thank you very much. So where can the readers find you and Global Giving online? Uh, you can find us at globalgiving.org. Great. Thank you very much, Mari.